By the end of November, Lee County collected nearly 4 million cubic yards of debris since Hurricane Ian made landfall at the end of September. Ask any debris site project manager, and they'll tell you it's an astounding amount of debris compared to previous hurricanes, and because every storm is different. Barry Lund is the project manager of the Crowder Gulf Debris Management Site, located at Coconut Road and US 41 Highway. If you drive by that corner, you've probably noticed that the piles of debris continue to grow. There's a reason for that. This storm was a heavy storm surge, so you got much more construction debris than in Irma. Irma was probably 80% vegetative debris and 20% C and D. This is going to be more like 50-50. So it's just a much higher concentration of construction debris because of all the flooding. There's no comparison. Um, Irma was about 1.8 million cubic yards, and that was done, I think, over about five months. We surpassed that in about 40 days, and it's still coming out. We think there's probably 10 million cubic yards total, and that's wow. why you continue to see the trucks rolling every day. They're estimating 10 million cubic yards total of storm debris just for Lee County. That equates to around 23 football fields with debris stacked 200 feet high, or as tall as an airport control tower, just for Lee County. The debris is collected by the now omnipresent black hauling trucks. The trucks with the additional trailer are called double barrels. Each trailer can hold up to 125 to 150 cubic yards, but the average is around 80 cubic yards due to the bulkiness of the debris. That means thousands of trucks collecting thousands of loads across southwest Florida. You know, to say what's sitting on the ground, I can tell you that we've had about 400,000 cubic yards that have come through my site in, in the past 23 days. The debris management site at 41 and Coconut Road is just one of the many in the county set up after the monster storm. Each site separates storm debris into five piles. Vegetative debris, construction and demolition, or C&D, appliances and white goods, electronics, or e-waste, and household hazardous waste. That's also how the county recommends separating storm debris for pickup at your home or business. It needs to be placed on or near the curb separate from your household garbage. And don't put it in black plastic bags. The debris contract at Crowder Gulf assumes that anything they can't physically see is like wet garbage, like food waste and things, which they are not allowed to pick up. So black plastic bags are right out. Yard waste can be placed in those large craft paper bags. They can be placed in clear plastic bags or they can be loose. Ultimately, the debris will be taken to a local landfill, ground up for mulch, or recycled based on the materials. With a potential of 10 million cubic yards in Lee County alone, it's likely southwest Florida will see storm debris on curbs until late February. Whitehead assures people that it will get picked up. For much of the county, we've already been through and done the first pass. And I just want to assure people that the county and their contract at Crowder Gulf will be doing multiple passes through the neighborhoods. If you miss the first pass, don't panic and think that no one's coming back because the contractor is absolutely coming back for that. Barry Lund with Crowder Gulf echoes the need for patience because he's personally driving Bonita Springs and Estero with a map to determine debris collection priorities. And some of these roads down here, Gary, Regal, I, I cleared this road eight or 10 times before the debris stopped coming out. It's not a go in there one time and you're done and come back in two weeks. And I do realize that some of these areas up here really wanted their debris off of the ground and they had some trees and some palm trees down. I mean, and we appreciate the patience of the people so much to understand. We're gonna to get to you, it may take me a week or two, because these people down here are totally decimated. For WGCU, this is Pam James.